Hi everyone, it's Chris. Today I am getting into making little dust masks. I watched a video on YouTube. Um, these little dust masks or surgical masks are really popular in Japan because of all the smog, but they also work, believe it or not, on normal everyday seasonal allergies. They work really great during flu season to keep yourself from getting sick. I'm making them because I like to garden and I want to be outside and I'm not supposed to be according to my doctor because I have severe allergies. Um, I've been making several of these lately. I absolutely love the things and as you can see they go on really easy. They stay on no problems whatsoever. I even got into a point I will put just a little tiny bit of eucalyptus oil on the outside. That helps with my asthma. Eucalyptus is great for asthma to begin with, but having something to put it on and be able to breathe it in, absolutely amazing. Now, what you're going to need for this project is going to be template which I've tried to download these templates. I have not found a downloadable template that I like that works. So I'm actually ended up making my own, modifying it multiple times. And I will be putting this up on my Facebook channel so that you can easily download a free template for these masks. You're going to need a piece of fabric. And as you can see, I'm using a scrap piece. You're going to need some kind of fabric, and this is optional. I've made some without this part, but this is a lining. This is a rayon blend, I believe. I don't remember. It's been so long since I bought it. It has zero stretch to it. Whether you have stretch or not does not matter, but I do have linings in some of these and again in some of mine I do not have linings um, so lining fabric optional something to write with is a definite this is a disappearing uh, marker and one side's air and water soluble and one side's water soluble which just means that get a little water in it and it goes away or if you're too cheap and don't want to spend the three four dollars on this use a pen it will not matter my template will not need seam allowances do not make seam allowances on this template um, you will need something to cut with rather scissors or your rotary cutter you're going to need a thin narrow piece of elastic um, you can also use they have cording elastic that's just a little piece of cord I'm actually expecting some in the next couple days here it just has not shown up for me the first thing you're going to need to do and this is my pretty side of my fabric normally if I had a big enough piece I would fold it in half and just draw once and cut once. On a scrap piece, you're going to need to flip it over, put your template down. The first time I went and traced this, I had my template where my little words are down. The second time, I had to put them where they were up because you need the mirror image so one way or the other you have to have it where you're getting both sides now if you're not as particular and this is just a fat quarter unused what I would do on a fat quarter and again you can get these for a whole dollar at Walmart 
I mean, they're not expensive. And every now and then you can get fat quarters at Joann's for under a dollar. Normally they're about two fifty, But every now and then they have a sale on them. What I would do is if I had a fat quarter, and I have done this, is fold it in half, sit it down, using the full template, go ahead and cut all the way around. I found that doing this, I can get about five templates out of this one piece. So I can get five pieces, five masks for a buck. And with this, it's not that hard. All you do is just trace around. And obviously my pen's not going to work today. Because while it says it's blue, it's actually red. But you can just take your template and go cut, cut, cut. I have a couple of these already cut out, so I'm not going to do it with this back quarter. What I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. Which, as you can see, this is just really scrap. And I will save everything else that I cut off because I will use it in another project. I do like to make um, crumb quilts, so I do crumb quilting. And you see, I'm not being exact exact, but if you're not going to be exact, error on the side of just outside of the lines. just have one little piece. You can see it just takes a minute to cut these out. And I probably need a new blade. And my rotary cutter for sure. But you can see when I cut this out and you get a nice little piece be careful if you have a directional pattern that the patterns are going the right way. This is not directional. I wanted to get the words going up, so I have it going up. But on this piece, there are really no words, so I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going in and, again, it only takes a second to cut. But that's more time than I'm going to use. The next step is going to be taking and sewing just about a quarter of an inch line all the way around just the curve. You want it to be able to open up and you can see when I open it, you end up like this with a little bit of a baggy. Now one thing I do and I highly recommend this because it does not sit correctly if you don't, is you go in and you just nip about a quarter of an inch or so all the way up to the seam. I will put the tip of my scissors right up to that seam and I will snip, snip, snip all the way around the curve until I end up with a seam that looks like this. And you see it's just frayed really well. Now the next part is the lining. If you're going to do a lining and I'm going to put this because you're going to end up like this. Because you're going to sew it wrong sides together on the lining. So that you end up with a piece on this side and this side. All I did again was that quarter inch seam just to connect the two pieces. Because the lining is going to be about two inches shorter, what I did was I matched up this seam and this seam and I sewed the two pieces together keeping those two seams on each side matched up. Now the other 
trick you need to be careful of is one side of this has a flat edge, the other a curved. This is the top, this is your bottom. Now once you get this done, you really need to, again, I didn't do it on this one and I should have, is make sure your seams are cut. If you don't have the seams cut up, you end up with a lot of problems because it does not want to sit correctly. So all the seams, I am sitting here cutting every little seam, especially where this joins because it does not sit comfortably if you don't. I've made a couple and this is one of the boo-boo ones I made. It's the first pattern. Once you do this, you'll have an opening right here. Do not sew these two sides together. The reason being is we're going to go ahead and sew those afterwards. So it does not need to be sewn right now. And you just easily flip it. Because of the openings and the size of this, it's an easy flip inside and out. And then you end up with something that kind of looks like this. If you don't get all these pressed open so your seams are perfect, it's not going to matter too much because you can still move it after you do the next part. So try to get those as pushed out as you can, but it's not going to matter. Um, if I line these, I do, I have not been sewing a top seam. I do not feel there is a need for it on the lined. On the ones I did without a lining, that means it's just the one layer of cotton. I do do the top. What I did was I folded it down one time. I sewed. I folded it down a second time. And I sewed again. So on the back you can see two sew lines. On the front you can only see the one seam. Now once you get that done, this is exactly what you're going to have. Um, then we're going to do the ends. The ends I've done the same way on all of these. And that is by going in and folding one time. And that's just to get rid of the raw edge. And then I fold about an inch to a three quarter inch to an inch pocket. The reason you need your little pockets right here, you can see, and I folded it twice, I finger pressed it really good, and then I sewed the line up and down. I do backstitch everything that I sew on these because I want them to last. These are washable. Um, so I did backstitch on both sides and I have this cute little pocket. Now the next step, once you get all of that done, is actually quite easy. And I'm going to hope it's as easy as I've been doing it. All I did was I took, this is about a quarter of an inch elastic band, and uh, I guess if you pinch it, it doesn't work very well. If you pop it down, just push it down just a hair bit, it will open up, and you can see you can get your band in very, very easily. This point... You need to go ahead and put it on your face and measure how much you need to go around your ears. I found that for me about three and a half to four inches is the right amount. 
and then what you do is you go ahead and then you cut it off the next part becomes a little more tricky and that's trying to sew this itty bitty piece together I have tried seven different ways and none of them are better than the other that typical overlap zigzag I've done that I've taken putting it on little bits of fabric try to go in put the band and then sew it up again I've done that several times as well this way works just a little better because you have something to grip with my absolute favorite is getting a little strip this is tear away stabilizer um, with the tear away stabilizer I found out that I can go ahead and sew it up and down and pull it through the machine because what happens is this bulk gets stuck under the presser foot and doesn't want to sew so you get one little spot going back and forth but that's it on your zigzag stitch you do want to zigzag this because the zigzag still allows stretch where a straight stitch would not I don't overlap them for comfort reasons what I will do is I will as you can see on this piece it's just a simple zigzag and I've gone over about three times and then flip it and repeat it the same process go over it several times clip it off and I'll have a piece that now looks like this this is a hundred percent usable at this point they are washable I would throw them in just with a standard load of laundry or if you want to wash them separate you can now I am going to be giving away a packet of these in April 2019 I believe I will be pulling the names on May in May um, I will have the details and information on my Facebook page you will need to subscribe to both the YouTube channel and my Facebook page in order to be put into the drawing I will be paying for shipping so whoever wins will get um, several of these I am in a making mood so I'm gonna be making a couple with the liners and a couple without so you get you'll get both and all you really have to do is subscribe to both of my channels both the channel and the Facebook page and you'll be entered in and I'm going to set for May the 5th for the drawing so hit the face go over to my Facebook page to get all the details and information for this project and in the next day or two I am hopefully going to be getting this pattern up on that channel I'm gonna actually have to ask my son how to do it he is a computer major so he's gonna help me put this up and this will be on my Facebook page only and it will be a free downloadable printable template um, one thing I'm going to do is I will have a one inch box make sure you have your one inch box to make sure that you have your seam allowance correct there are no additional seam allowances needed for this the only thing you will need to do is fold your template like this if you're doing a lining you want to have a little bit of overage as I've shown in this guy you want the overage in order to fold it down once fold it over top of your little piece here 
your lining piece in order to go through with your elastic. So make sure you're folding in both corners to give it a nice even look. Fold down, fold down. And the goal is one seam across these ends to make the pockets for your elastic. So you will have your fold lines on the templates and they will be available on my Facebook page for free. So thank you for joining me today and we'll see you next time.